Stefan, the big question that everybody's trying to figure out right now is what are we going to be doing throughout this year in terms of providing protection against Omicron or whatever comes next? You're already talking about a fourth shot that is going to be specifically tailored to Omicron. Just talk me through how that is going to work this year. When are you going to start production? When are we going to start seeing it in people's arms? How do you think this year is going to work in terms of the variants that we're going to see? Great. Well, good morning or good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me and indeed Happy New Year. So I would say first, let's focus on what should be done right now. And that's pretty clear if you look at the data, especially the data coming out of the UK, who is the head of the US in terms of Omicron, which is if you have not been vaccinated, do so today. If you don't have your booster, get one today. Uh, the data is very clear. People have got three doses of an mRNA vaccine are highly protected against hospitalization and against deaths. And that's what's really, really important. So the, the current vaccine works very, very well. And actually just Singapore uh, announced last week that they look at all the vaccine and the Moderna vaccine provide the best protection against them, so which we are, of course, very happy and very proud about. For the rest of the year, we need to wait for a bit of data to be able to announce really what's going to be the fall of 22 booster strategy. Uh, but of course, we're not waiting for the real world evidence data. We are we are moving very aggressively. We're going to be uh, in a couple of weeks uh, in the clinic with an Omicron specific variant booster. We have already tested, as you remember, guy, an alpha and a beta and a delta uh, booster mRNA. Uh, we are going to look at combinations as well because we're not only trying to protect people against Omicron. But I think it's important to stay ahead of the virus. Mm -hmm. There are some mutation in other variants that are worrying in terms of virulence, the aggressivity of a virus that are not present in Omicron. So you could worry about an Omicron evolving further, adding more virulent strains, which would be, of course, very problematic, even if it's high infectiousity. So we're going to get a good sense, but uh, we are increasing manufacturing very aggressively. You know, in uh, Q4, we shipped 300 million doses. That's a run rate you know, of 1.2 billion. We mm -hmm. have new capacity coming online in Q1. So we're going to be able to have two to three billion boosters for 2022. When you wind up looking at the next booster that we're going to have to get, is it Omicron Plus? Is it going to be a catch-all? kind of booster. Um, it feels like the vi there's two stories out there. One is that the virus is going to keep mutating, and the other is that Omicron kind of marks the end of the pandemic to get it to be endemic. So I think it's too early to tell. It's highly possible that Omicron marks, marks the end of the pandemic into an endemic setting, which will still mean that a lot of people at risk will need to be vaccinated or boosted uh, to stay healthy and to stay away from hospitals. That's what you see with flu, that's what you see with RSV, that's what you see with OC43, another coronavirus. Uh, that new booster for fall of 22 will not be uh, any mutation booster because the biology uh, is not there yet. Uh, but we are really looking at the data and the mixing to see. Uh, we believe Omicron uh, vaccine will be in that booster. Uh, we think it has to be. But do we need to add something else that teaches the human body mutations that are not in Omicron, but that are very virulent, like, for example, in Delta? Uh, this is too early to tell. We'll know in the next few weeks when we get the real-world evidence data. We're going to mix and match all the blood samples from people with different vaccines to get a good sense. And then we'll decide, and of course, we'll communicate our strategy for fall 22. Stefan, um, Sir Andrew Pollard, who is the head of the UK's Committee on Vaccination, Vaccination and Immunisation, was interviewed recently and he said the following, I'm going to quote, we can't vaccinate the planet every four or six months. It's not sustainable or affordable. What do you say to that? So what I say is I think as we more, more and more of an immune response, because remember, every time you get a booster, you, you improve your immune response. When people get naturally infected, and unfortunately, we have a lot of people with Omicron right now, they're also mounting an immune response, boosting their antibodies, teaching new tricks to the immune system for the new mutation. So I think we might end up in a world where it might be for people at risk, an annual booster, which is what we do for flu anyway. And one of the things we're doing at Moderna to make life easier and to make it more affordable is we're working on the flu vaccine using mRNA. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to combine it, flu and COVID into one single annual booster that I think people that are 50 and above 
people that are high risk, like medical workers, immunocompromised, people that have cancer, are going to want every fall to make sure we have a nice fall in the winter and they don't get sick and hospitalized yeah. of flu or COVID. So, uh, Stefan, when do we get data on that? When are you expecting it? So we have data of flu already that we published. Our flu vaccine in phase one looked as good as the best vaccine that's already on the market today. And we have several ideas on how to keep improving that efficacy. Uh, the earliest of a combination could be the fall of 2023. That would be the earliest. What's happening with transmission at the moment, Stefan? And what impact are the vaccines having on transmission, particularly when it comes to Omicron, that is highly transmissible? There is a huge debate about vaccine mandates, particularly in the United States. The, the argument surrounding those, those mandates is that it reduces transmission, that it, that it helps society at large. Do you think the current round of vaccines are delivering that when it comes to Omicron? So it's very clear from the data, and again, I think the data coming out of the UK is the most telling because you guys were a bit ahead of the US in terms of Omicron. Uh, the efficacy against infection person to person is lower with Omicron versus Delta or Alpha or even Beta. Uh, with a vaccine, there is no doubt. Because the genetic drift has been very important. Remember, more than 30 mutations. But what is very important for society is that the protection against hospitalization and deaths is still very high. And if you look at the data, it's mostly unvaccinated people that are hospitalized and that are dying right now of Omicron. In the short term, it seems after the third dose that there is good protection of transmission, but it might be waning over time because, again, of that genetic drift, which is why having a more adapted booster for fall of 2022 I think is the right answer. Stefan, if I take a look at your stock price over the last year, you're down like 58% uh, in the high that we saw last year. And I know you're a CEO, so you're going to say, I don't look at the share price, I just kind of do my job. But I'm wondering how you interpret the share price fall. Are we looking at a situation where there's lack of confidence uh, in Moderna and its vaccine? And if so, how do you restore it? What's the read through for you? And how do you tweak it for the next phase of the pandemic? Yeah, so I think that what we're focused on is to driving the sales and driving the company. Uh, if you look at it, you know, it's too early now to, to review the Q4 earnings. We're going to get them in a few weeks. But already with sales of, you know, $17.5 billion for first year sales, this is not too bad. Uh, as we said this morning, we increased our numbers for 22s, you know, signed APAs with upfront payment, $18.5 billion, option of $3.5 billion, and still a lot of discussions ongoing. So I will expect over the year that those numbers are going to go up. And then people are thinking, no, the pandemic is going to go away uh, and they won't have any more sales. And this is, I think, the place where people are not understanding both that the endemic setting is going to be here forever. This virus is not leaving the planet. mRNA vaccine are the solutions. In uh, high-income countries, there are only mRNA vaccine. And the real world evidence is also showing that the Moderna vaccine has very strong protection and duration of protection versus the other mRNA vaccine. And then it's the flu coming behind and you no know, 40 products in the pipeline. So I think for, for investors that are looking at a, a few years horizon, uh, I think they're going to be really happy owning the Moderna stock at these levels. Do, do you think investors are understanding that? Do, there's been such a focus, Stefan, on what you, you've been doing in terms of the vaccines. Do you think people are sort of understanding and appreciating what you're doing elsewhere? And do you think there has been, to a certain extent, um, a, a kind of refocusing of attention within your business, within the healthcare sector, on the, on the pandemic for obvious reasons? And do you think 2022, 2023 is when we start catching up in other areas of therapeutics? Very much so. I mean, when I talk to investors, the only questions I get is, ar is around Omicron and COVID for most investors. But thankfully, we have very high quality long term investors. You know, and one of them, for example, is Bailey Gifford, which has no reported data, is the largest shareholder of a company. Uh, and as you know, this is a very long term driven uh, investor. Uh, and when I meet with them, they, of course, ask about uh, COVID uh, as rightly so. But they really look past COVID. They really try to understand, you know, how big could be an annual single respiratory booster that includes, you know, flu and COVID and RSV and all those things. How big could be the market? How much share more than I could have? What could be the price of such a product in a normal setting where the payers 
are willing to pay for value, not a low pandemic price. So, I mean, if you look at it, in the US, it is cheaper to buy a Moderna vaccine than to buy a COVID test. How many COVID tests have you done so far? Yeah. So if you think about the cost, it's incredible. 